we're at our last uh, taverna for the trip, and it's uh, it's been great. We're seeing mezcal producers from a region that, that the denomination doesn't officially recognize as, as mezcal production. So we're visiting Garcia producers and then other producers who refer to their agave spirits as mezcal. Um, and I think that it shows how extensive this world is and how many different um, producers there are that are just making things in their, in their small world that we don't always have access to. Before I came on this trip I was studying agave varietals a lot and trying to, to use that as a vehicle for understanding and I think what this trip has really taught me more than anything else is that you have to stop trying to put mezcal in a box. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't fit into a nice little package or a nice little bottle that we can put on our shelves. Um, but instead it's just this, um, this tradition that, that is unique to its own culture um, and that our, our best efforts might be made in trying to understand their culture instead of trying to put it in the box of our own. Uh, we had a big discussion today about some of the changes that are starting to impact the mezcal industry. Um, for example, Zygna Mezcal's uh, production levels in Oaxaca and the impacts that it will have on the industry there. Um, and I think that everybody needs time to kind of digest their own opinions about that, but perhaps the clock is running out on our opportunity to really protect traditional mezcal producers because we're seeing um, agave fields being bought uh, for the production of, of agave syrup or for use in tequila or by bulk mezcal producers and, and small artisanal major, makers who I've learned on this trip frequently don't own their own agaves but often are buying agaves from elsewhere. Um, their, their opportunity to continue to make those spirits may be threatened in the future by, by this growth and this interest in mezcal. So as American bartenders, if we're allowing that interest to grow and we're not doing so in a manner that protects those who have, who have you know, stimulated our interest in that spirit category altogether, I think that we're being irresponsible in how we talk about a spirit that's a little more delicate and a little more precious than, than those that we've popularized in the United States in the past. I think that um, instead of just having a fascination with small producers um, in Mexico, uh, we need to have a fascination with, with their lifestyle and what, what accurately constitutes how their spirits are made because if we don't really understand that and we just we just become um, intrigued by what's in a bottle and, and no bullet point knowledge about mezcal, we're really missing the entire point of this tradition that's been passed down and has been cultivated from, from generation on. Um, and I think that that's, that's our real responsibility as we become more fanatical about mezcal and we want to, to engage that industry more and more, we have to be careful about acknowledging what our own presence is and what our own impact is.